Rogue. Rogue the dog said. He rested his paws on top of the fence and looked around at him. The rogue came running into the yard. It was early morning and the sun had not really come up yet. The air was cold and grey. The walls of the house were damp with moisture. The dog opened his jaws a little as he watched his big black paws clenching the wood of the fence. The rogue stood by the open gate, looking into the yard. He was a small rogue, thin and white and wobbly legs. Rogue blinked at the dog. The dog showed his teeth. Rogue, he said again. The sound echoed in the silent half-darkness. Nothing moved, nor stirred. The dog popped, dropped down, walked back across the yard to the porch steps, sat down on the bottom step and watched the rogue. Rogue glanced at him. And he stretched his neck up to the window of the house, just above him. He sniffed at the window. The dog came flashing across the yard. Hit the fence and the gate shuddered and groaned. The rogue was walking quickly up the path, hurrying with funny little steps, mincing along. The dog lay down against the slats of the gates, breathing heavily, his red tongue hanging. He watched the rogue disappear. The dog lay silently, his eyes bright and black. Day was beginning to come. The sky turned a little whiter. From all around the sounds of people, Echoed through the morning air, lights popped up behind shades. A chilly dawn, the window was open. Dog did not move. He watched the path. The kitchen, Miss Cradosai, poured water into the coffee pot. Steam rose from the water, blinding her. She set the pot down at the edge of the stove and went into the pantry. When she came back, Alf was standing at the door of the kitchen, put on his glasses. Put his glasses on. You bring the paper, he said. It's outside. Alf Kodowski walked across the kitchen. He threw the bolt on the back door. On the back door. Threw the bolt on the back door and stepped out in the porch. He looked in the grey, grey, bare morning, the boat fence. Boris lay black and furry, his tongue out. Put your tongue in, Alf said. Dog looked up quickly. His tail beat against the ground. That tongue, Alf said. Put the tongue in. The dog and the man looked at one another. The dog whined. His eyes were bright and feverish. Rog, he said softly. What? Elf looked around. Someone coming? Paper boy come? The dog started at him. Well, mouth open. It's sunny upset these days, Elf said. You better take it easy. We better, we're both getting too old for excitement. He went inside the house. The sun came up. The street became bright and alive with colour. Postman went along the sidewalk, his letters and magazines. So the children hurried by, to laughing and talking. About eleven o'clock, Mrs. Kodosi swept the front porch. She sniffed the air, pausing for a moment. It smells good today, she said. That means it's going to be warm. Heat the noonday sun, the black dog's lay stretched out full length on the porch. The tress rose and fell. The cherry tree, the birds were playing, squawking and chattering each other. Once in a while, Boris raised his hand and suddenly looked at, looked at him. Presley got to his feet and trotted down under the tree. He was standing on the tree when he saw the two rogues sitting on the fence watching him. He's big, the first rogue said. Most gardens aren't as big as this. A further rogue nodded, his head wobbling on his neck. Boris watched them without moving, his body stiff and hard. The rogue was silent and looking at the big dog with his, sh- with his shaggy gruff. Of white on his neck. How is this? His how is offering on? The first rogue said. Is it almost full? Yes, the other nodded. Almost ready. You there, the first rogue said, raising voice. Do you hear me? We decided to attempt the offering this time. Do you remember to let us in? No sense now. Don't forget, the other set one said. It won't be long. Boris said nothing. The other rogues leaped off the fence. Went over together, just beyond the wall. One of them brought out a map and they studied it. This area really is none too good for the first trial, said Volk. First Volk said, too many guardians. Now the wolf west, north side area. They decided, the other Volk said. There are so many factors. Of course. They glanced at Boris and moved back further down, further from the fence. He could not hear the rest of what they were saying. President of Volk's put their map away 
went off down the path. Boris walked over to the fence and sniffed at the balls. He smelled a sickly burton order of rogues in the hair. Stunned back at night when Ralph Kodosky came home, the dog was standing at the gate, looking up the walk. Alf opened the gate and went into the yard. How are you? He said, thumping the dog's side. You start worrying. Seems like you've been nervous or late. You didn't, you didn't used to be that way. Boris whined, looking intently at the, up at the man's face. You're a good dog, Boris, Alf said. Pretty big too for a dog. Can't remember how long ago you used to be only a little bit of a puppy. Boris leaned against him and said, Man, man against man's leg. A good dog, Ralph murmured. I was sure I wish I knew what was on your mind. When inside the house, Mrs. Kodowski was sitting on the table, setting the table for dinner. Alf went into the living room and took his coat and hat off. He set his lamp, he set his lamp pal down the sideboard and came back to the kitchen. What's the matter, Miss Kodowski said. That dog got to stop making all that noise, barking. Neighbor's going to complain to the police again. Hope we don't have to Give him, up. give him to your brother, Miss Kutowski said, holding arms. He sure goes crazy, especially on Friday mornings. Garbage man can. Maybe you calm down, Elf said. He lit his pipe and smoked summonly. He couldn't do, used to be that way. Maybe he'd get, be, get better like he was. We'll see, Mrs. Kutowski said. The sun rose up and cold and anonymous. Mist hung over the trees and in the low places. It was Friday morning. The back dog lay under the porch, listening in his eyes wide and staring. His coat was stiff with hoar frost, and breath from his nostrils made clouds of steam in the thin air. So he turned his head and leapt up. But far off, a long way away, a faint sound came, a kind of crushing sound. Well, Boris cried, looking around. He carried to the gate and stood up. His paw was on front top of the fence. The distance the sound came again, louder now, but not as far away as before. It was a crashing, clanging sound, as if something was being rolled back, as if a great door was being opened. Rog! Boris cried. He stared out anxiously at the darkened windows above him. Nothing stirred, nothing. Along the street, rogs came. Rogs in a trap moved along, bouncing against the rough stones, crashing and whirling. Rog! Boris cried. He leapt on the his eyes blazing, then he came more well, calm. He set himself down on the ground, waited, listening. And in front of the rogues stopped their truck. He could hear them opening the doors, stepping down to the sidewalk. Boris ran round in a little circle. He whined and his muzzle turned once again towards the house. Inside a warm, dark bedroom, Miss Kodonsky sat up in a little bed and squinted at the clock. That damn dog, he might, Mr. Kodonsky, Sat up a little in the up in a little in the bed and squinted at the clock. That damn dog, he mud. That damn dog. He turned his face towards the pillow, pillow and what, what, closed his eyes. Rogues were coming down the path now. First frog pushed against the gate and the gate opened. Rogues came into the yard. The dog barked, backed away from them. Rog, rog, he cried. A better hurried, better smell. Rogues came to his nose, turned away. The earning. Offering earned, said the first rug. Said it is for I think. He smiled a rigid and angry dog. How very good of you, he said. The rogues came forth towards the metal can, and one of them took the lid from it. Rug, rug, Boris cried. Hurried against the bottom of the porch steps, his body shook from horror. The rogues were lifting up the metal can, turning it into one on its side, cut it poured into the ground. The rogues scooped the Sacks of bulging, splintering paper together, catching the orange peels and fragments of bits of toast and eggshells. One of the rogs popped an eggshell with his mouth. His teeth crunched the eggshell. Rog. Boris cried helplessly. I was just said the rogs were almost finished with their work of gathering up the offering. They stopped for a moment, looking at Boris. And slowly, suddenly the rogs looked up the side of the house along the Sacro Chaco. The window with its brown shade pulled lightly, tightly down. Rog! Boris screamed. He went, came round and toward, quite toward them, dancing furry in dismay. But the rogs turned away from the window, went out through the gate, closing it behind them. Dog at them, said the last rog said with contempt. 
pulling his corner of the blanket of his shoulder. While he strained against the fence, his mouth open, dabbing wildly. Biggest rope began to wave his arms. First, his voice retreated. Still down the bottom porch steps, his mouth still open, the depths of him, a happy, terrible moan issued forth for wail, misery, despair. Come on, the other rogue said, the lingering wogs of the fence. They walked up the path, well, except for the, those little places around the guardians. This area is well cleared, Biggest Rock said. We'll be glad when this particular garden is done. He, put, he, co- he said he causes us lots of trouble. Don't be impatient, one of the rogues said. He grinned. Our truck is full enough of it as it is. Let's leave every- something for next week. All the rogues laughed. They went up the path, carrying the offering, the dirty, staggering, sagging basket.